This computer only understands one instruction, and yet, it can do anything. In this video, I'll show you how this computer works, and how I built it from scratch. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In order to understand what makes one instruction set computers so fascinating, we need to understand what an instruction set is. It's actually deceptively simple. A CPU's instruction set defines all of the instructions that the CPU can execute, defining a language that the CPU understands so we can write programs for it to run. Any CPU needs to be able to do a few different things, like performing math and logic, reading and writing to and from memory, and making decisions using conditional branching. Most CPU instruction sets include anywhere from a few dozen to a few hundred different instructions that each handle one or more of these tasks in different ways. By combining lots of these simple instructions into a program, you can make a computer do just about anything. But it turns out you don't really need all of those different instructions to make a fully functional CPU. You can do it with just one. When I first heard of one instruction set computing, I found it kind of hard to believe that this was even possible. After all, how can just one instruction do all of the essential tasks that a CPU needs to perform? Turns out it really is possible. Here's how it works. Our single instruction will be called sublec. This stands for subtract and branch if less than or equal to zero. The sublec instruction always accepts three arguments representing locations in memory. The instruction takes the value stored in B, subtracts the value stored in A, and stores the result back in B. Then, if the result of the subtraction was less than or equal to zero, we branch the program to address C. Because math and memory access and conditional branching are all baked into this one instruction, with a bit of clever thinking, we can emulate any instruction set with different combinations of this one instruction. For example, if we want to do addition, we can simply subtract a negative number. And once we can do both addition and subtraction, it is relatively straightforward to implement multiplication and division. With a little finesse, we can even copy values from one location in memory to another. I won't go into a lot of detail here about how to emulate different operations using sublex, since that would make this video quite long. However, a quick Google search will yield lots of helpful information for those interested. In this video, I will mostly focus on how I designed and built a CPU that implements sublec. I started by designing the basic architecture of the CPU. We have four registers, the A register, the B register, the address register, and the program counter. The A and B registers read from RAM via the data bus and feed their output into a subtractor which uses the data bus to store results back in RAM. The subtractor also feeds its output into a branching unit, which decides whether the program should branch. The address register is used as a pointer for memory access, and the program counter steps through program instructions. All of these components are coordinated by the CPU's control sequencer, which activates the different parts of the processor in the right sequence in order to execute the sublec instruction. With this architecture, we can implement the sublec instruction in six steps. First, we load A into the address register, then we load from address A into the A register. Next, we load address B into the address register, then we load from address B into the B register. Next, we store the output of the subtractor at address B. Finally, if we need to branch, then we load address C into the program counter. Otherwise, we move to the next instruction. Once I had the architecture and instruction sequence defined, the next step was to go into Logisim and design the actual logic for the CPU. Here's the Logisim circuit that I made. Here you can see the A and B registers, the subtractor, the address register, the program counter, and the control sequencer all laid out. I made the A, B, and address registers asynchronous since they should never really encounter any race conditions due to feedback. This let me make them using simple D-latches which use less than half the logic gates than I otherwise would have needed to build synchronous registers. I made an entire video about designing registers. I'll link to it in the description if you're interested. 
The program counter, unfortunately, by nature, needs to be synchronous. So I had to bite the bullet and just build a full synchronous register for that. The control sequencer uses a six-stage ring counter to go through all six steps of the instruction sequence and uses a series of gates to activate the various CPU components at the right times. The branching unit feeds into the control sequencer in order to decide which path to take on the final step of each instruction. The processor has both an 8-bit data bus and an 8-bit address bus, allowing it to access up to 256 bytes of RAM. For output, I connected a simple memory mapped output register wired to a binary to decimal display. I was initially planning on building a binary to decimal display for this project, but as you'll see later, I came up with something even better for this build. A binary to decimal display would be fun to make in the future though, so I might consider a separate video just on that if you guys are interested. As we've been going over the design of the CPU, we've been running a Fibonacci program that I wrote for it, showing that the processor really does work. As cool as this design is though, I decided I couldn't just leave things here. I wanted to build this processor for real. So I did. It's really hard to put into words just how long this took to do. This definitely wasn't a simple weekend project. I spent about four months worth of weekends and evenings painstakingly wiring all the individual transistors of each logic gate together. In total, the project used 683 transistors, 299 resistors, 41 LEDs, lots of switches and buttons, probably over a hundred feet of wire, and a few other miscellaneous components, all hand soldered to a cardboard substrate. I also decided to use a memory mapped LCD display for output instead of the binary to decimal display I had initially planned on. And after everything was finished, here is the result. It's hard to describe just how excited I was to see this thing run real code after all that hard work. Everything you see except the RAM chip and the LCD display was hand built out of individual components. Even things like the clock circuit and the voltage regulator are made from individual transistors. Here you can see it running a Hello World program that I wrote for it. I wrote the program in assembly code and then I assembled it using a custom assembler that I wrote in C++. I then had to enter it into my Sublex CPU's RAM manually, one byte at a time, which took a while since the assembled program is over 100 bytes long. It was so cool to see Hello World being printed out onto the LCD for the first time. Unfortunately, I don't have actual circuit schematics for this CPU available, since I was just kind of translating the gate level design into NMOS on the fly when I was building. However, I have posted a GitHub repository containing the Logisim file for the CPU design, as well as the C++ code for the assembler and the Hello World assembly program. I'll link to it in the description. I encourage you to check it out if you want to play around with this processor, or maybe build one yourself. If you like what you see here, you might also enjoy some of my other videos. I have two series in active development as of this posting. In one, I am designing an 8-bit processor more capable than this one, and in the other, I am building a Sudoku game in C++. I also have lots more ideas for projects I would like to do on this channel. Have any ideas for future projects you'd like to see me tackle? Or maybe you have some ideas on how to improve this sub -like processor I made. Make sure to let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.